We're going to have a little praise and worship music this morning to sing together, uh, since we're not having Pastor Mike and Pastor Praise. So if you would stand this morning and join from the Faith We Sing book, we'll sing uh, We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise 2031, and we're going to sing it through tri twice this morning. That's not the right song. <laughs> that would be the hymn of invitation. <laughs> sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you sacrifices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. So glad that you could join us today. Uh, announcements for today. Um, regular Sunday school classes are going to start up in September um, on the 12th. Uh, there's new church directories back there at the back. Um, we're still collecting donations for the Judah House. And uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock will be a memorial service for Eddie Scheller. As most of you are aware and probably got the uh, phone tree message that he passed away the other evening. Um, so we would, we would welcome you back at 2 to uh, celebrate his life. Um, scouts are starting up again um, this month for the month of August. Washtenaw County Fair um, will also be taking place August the 25th through the 28th. Um, so make sure you've got your entries ready and get them entered and um, go out there and enjoy a good time. August the 29th, as you guys know, um, every fifth Sunday of the month, we kind of just do a Sunday of, of singing, um, just to kind of praise and worship that way. So that will be this month on the 29th. And as well on that day, um, we're going to be starting back up youth. Um, as, as we've let you know, St. Youth's Day has been canceled, um, but we're still going to do something to kind of kick off the year. So we're going to have homemade ice cream at the park that day that evening um, and it's a it's a church-wide event we want everybody to come um, and enjoy time and fellowship together I think we're going to talk the pastor into bringing his guitar and and playing a little bit and we'll probably play some volleyball or whatever else we can find so um, we invite you to join us that day are there any other announcements that I might have missed or overlooked that need to be brought forward this morning Jeff, I wanted to mention just real quickly, I failed to mention it last week. We want to thank the Focus Sunday School class, this church, and this community for all of the support for the school supply project. We raised over $14,000 to get all of the supplies purchased for the elementary kids pre-K through 6th. They arrived the day before school started. It all worked itself out, but um, it, it was just really a blessing, and, and we're blessed to be able to to work on that throughout the year and to help out the elementary. And we just want to thank you for all of the support that uh, you all have provided. Thank you. 
All right, well, let's stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. So I talked to Misty a little bit the other day about that, and she, was, and she said, yeah, I think there'd be interest at the church, you know, and all that. I said, I think there's a lot of, they didn't want to, or people felt like they didn't want to step on their toes. It was kind of hard Sunday school class doing them like, oh, like, we need help. Like, this thing has gotten so big and everything. So it may just be a matter of just going and talking to them again and all that. But, I think we have more. I think I should have mentioned that. Sounds like yeah, they were just there to take the time. They've been sitting in a few seasons on tour. I see these. Some guys think that that shipping people say that is a rule. It's a rule that they only got here ever so often. So it was like two days. Oh, wait, that's that. Right. Yeah, that's that. Right. All right, if you could make your way back to your pews and. Uh, Join me this morning in the call to worship. Give thanks to God. We thank God for joy, for laughter, for abundant blessings of every kind. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. We thank God when we can and as we can for struggles, for solitude, Give thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God that in Christ our joy as well as our pain, our losses as well as our laughter are in God's heart and hands. Amen. Would you please join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together in a free world to be able to worship you as as we see fit we thank you for the the many blessings that we have that you continue to bestow upon us we thank you for the opportunities that you present with present to us each and every day most of all lord we're just we're thankful um, we ask that you would help prepare our hearts for worship this morning um, that we may come and and worship you and fellowship with one another and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you would, please turn in your hymnals to page 881 as we recite the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand and join in our hymn of praise this morning on page 539 in your red hymnal, O Spirit of the Living God. Church once more and make it truly 
We've got a good crowd today. All right, so who can tell me what Thanksgiving's about? Getting together, Getting together right? We get together with family, friends. right? And friends, yep, yep. And we're thankful then, aren't we? Okay, so why are we talking about Thanksgiving in August, right? It's a long ways off, isn't it? Okay, do you guys think that should be the only time that we're thankful? No. no. Okay, so let's see here. If you get a present and it's one that you really like, are you thankful? Yes. Yeah, you're thankful, right? Okay, what about when you get dessert? Are you pretty thankful for dessert? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty great, isn't it? Okay. No, yeah, that's right. What are you thankful for? You. For daddy? Oh, well, that's very sweet. Okay, what about when mom and dad ask us to clean our room? Are we thankful? No, we're not. I am. You are. Right, right. So we should be thankful, right? Because we have toys to play with. We have a room, we have a house that we live in that we get to clean up, right? So, yeah, not cleaning. Yeah, it's not that much fun, but we should still be thankful, right? Yeah. What about, what about when... Mommy and when mommy fixes something for supper that maybe we don't quite like, like broccoli. Or, oh, she doesn't like to cook? Well, that's all right. That's all right. You eat most anything, right? So. Right? Yeah, so there's some things we don't like, right? But they're good for us, right? Like broccoli, peas. You like broccoli? Yeah, green beans. Some of that stuff we're not super thankful that we get to eat, but we should be, right? Because we've got plenty of food. We're not hungry, right? So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is about being thankful and how we should always be thankful. Not just at Thanksgiving, but we should be thankful all the time, right? So try to remember that this week as you go to school and uh, while you hang out with friends. And when mommy asks you to clean your room, maybe we should be thankful about that, right? All right, let's, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to always remember that there's something to be thankful for. Even when it's doing things we may not like or that are not that much fun, we can always and we should always be thankful. Thank you for everything that you've given to us, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Does anyone have any joys or concerns they'd like to share with the congregation this morning? Yeah, all the kids, <laughs> you bet. The parents are thankful they started back to school, right? Who had their hand up? Okay. I have number seven great-grandchild, Wednesday. Another little girl. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. And that seventh great grandchild came this week. Any other joys or concerns? Yes, me and Jordan had a good friend that was in an accident last weekend at a rodeo, had a buck and horse flip over backwards on him. He was in ICU in a critical condition. I said he had very little brain activity, wasn't sure he would ever wake up again. And two or three days later, he woke up and he's awake and that's just proof that the prayers work and it was a miracle that that he woke up and he's doing better now he's still in the hospital but doing better what was his name Nicole? brandon i mean josh josh mcguire josh mcguire josh mcguire okay. are there others this morning very thankful for the rain we received it was a little unexpected for the middle of august the name wrong when I asked a minute ago but Stephanie's husband's family yes yes are they Georgie yes um so I talked to Stephanie this morning um and she said that where Georgie's family is and kind of where she was in Haiti there wasn't really any damage there everybody's okay there other parts of the country are really bad um and she said it's Everybody's kind of in a difficult situation because they're all kind of having flashbacks to 2010 when it was so bad across the country. You know, they were just kind of getting over that, trying to rebuild structures. It hit again, and I think the tropical storm is scheduled to hit Haiti tomorrow. 
So they're trying to piece things back together, and the storm's about to hit. But uh, as far as uh, Jorgie's family, they're all okay. Um, they didn't receive any damage, so we're very, very thankful for that. Are there any others this morning? I hope everybody drives safe home and everybody to have a great week. Very good. Any others this morning? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we come to you again with, with joys and with praise and, and with thanksgiving. We're, we're very thankful for all the kids of this church and community. We're, we're grateful for the blessings that grandkids are in our lives, um, that we're able to celebrate those joys. Lord, we, we thank you for the little things in life, like being able to get up and, and to travel safely, get to our destination without any injuries, um, it's, it's something that we tend to take for granted, Lord, and, and we just thank you for all those small blessings in our lives. But Lord, we, we also come to you with, with prayer concerns. Um, we, we know that the list in, in the bulletin of, of people on the prayer list that are in need of prayer is, seems like it gets longer and longer, and, and we ask that you would be with those individuals, that you would give them the, the healing and the care that they need. Lord, we, we also especially pray for, for Josh McGuire. Um, he, he's got a long road ahead of him. He's already come extremely far, and, and we thank you for that, for that miracle that you've worked. But we ask that you would continue to be with him and his family as he regains his strength and, and continues down a difficult road. Lord, we also pray for, for the people of Haiti. We ask that you would watch over them, give them protection as a storm approaches. Um, we know that, that they've been hit a, a devastating blow with the earthquake, and we just ask that you would help them to be able to rebuild their lives, um, to, to get back to being normal to what they were used to. And Lord, we, we just ask uh, especially also that you'd be with Eddie Scheller's family um, as they, they deal with his loss. Um, Lord, we know that, that he's in a better place and he's no longer surf, suffering, and we know that you welcomed him with open arms, but, but we pray for the family that's left here grieving that loss, Lord. And we ask all of these things as we pray that prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward? Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. His name is wonderful. 
His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us, that we can at this time offer back a portion of that which is yours. Lord, we ask that you would take it to further your kingdom, no matter the amount, Lord. We just ask that it would, would be a blessing to someone else in some other way. And we ask that you would continue to use it uh, to, to spread the word not just around Cordell, but around the world. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Get the uh, PowerPoint sped up here to kind of where we're at. So, apologize, I'm moving around too much in that mic in my cheek, I think. But, uh, all right, so now the, uh, the part that you guys all dreaded, right? It's not Pastor Mike up here, it's me, and so you don't know what you're going to get. But uh, we're, we're going to spend a little bit of time today looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. So here now, the be very careful then as you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. But understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God for the people of God. All right, so when I, when I kind of started out doing this lay servant training and, and Pastor Mike had asked me to, uh, to preach this Sunday because he's in Mexico or, or was in Mexico, got back late last night. Um, you know, the, the first thing that kind of entered my head was that scripture from Luke chapter 4, verse 24, where it says, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Right? That's the thing that kind of clicked in my head. It's like, okay, here I am standing up in front of my home congregation, and I'm going to bring a message. And so why is that? Why is a prophet not accepted in his hometown? And I was going to pick on Peggy, um, because she always says, you know, that she's, she likes to introduce herself as my spiritual leader. And, and after today, she may take that title away. 
um, after, after she hears what I have to say. But, but why is that? Okay, it, to me, one reason is this church helped raise me, right? So you've known me from the time I was little. You know the trouble that Colton and me and, and Nakona got into. You probably paddled our backsides when we didn't listen. You know, Pat was a second grade teacher. You know all the secrets that I have. You probably know some things that I've done that I probably don't even remember doing or that I don't realize I've done, right? So, so you know all this stuff. You, you've helped teach me. In Sunday school, you, you've helped raise me up. So what could I possibly have to say to you guys that you haven't heard or that you haven't taught me? And, and a, another part of that is that, you know, we live in a small town, and everybody knows everything about somebody in a small town, right? And, and if you don't believe that, you'll, you'll soon figure that out. Just because our lives are not private, right? We live in a public setting. We live in a small community. We're active in that community. And, and so people know everything about us. But, you know, I think that scripture also says something else to us. And, and I think what he's really trying to tell us is that we're not supposed to stay in our hometown. We're supposed to go out, right? We're supposed to spread the word of God. And, and he, he tells the disciples, you know, go go and make disciples, right? He doesn't say stay and make disciples. He tells us to go. Um, and, you know, I kind of relate that a little bit to when you're in college, you know, you get your degree and, and maybe you want to go on and get your master's. Well, they don't want you to stay where you got your bachelor's, right? They want you to go somewhere else. They want you to learn something new. They want to have collaboration and, and share thoughts and ideas. And, and I think that's some of what we're called to do. And to me, that, that kind of relates to what we're going to talk about a little bit in, in Ephesians. Um, we're going to talk about how it, it's not always private, right? It's, it's personal, but it's not private. That's, that's the title of the sermon today. And so the scripture in Ephesians, a little bit of background here. Paul's writing this letter to the church at Ephesus, and he's writing it when he's imprisoned, okay? And... Why was Paul in prison? Okay, he was there because he was out, right? He was out on missionary journeys. He was spreading the word, and he was saying some things or doing some things that maybe people didn't like. This thing is about to drive me crazy. I might have to, have to ditch it. But uh, So he's out spreading the word, and they end up throwing him in jail. And so he's, he's writing this letter, and he wrote several letters to different churches around the area um, during this time. But this looks a little bit different from some of the others that he wrote. This letter is a letter of encouragement, right? He's trying to encourage the church. Whereas if you remember when he wrote his letter to the church at Corinth, right, that was a warning. He was telling the church, hey, you better straighten up. You better watch what you're doing. Um, bad things are going to happen. But this one isn't that way. It's, it's a letter of encouragement. And throughout the entire book of Ephesians, he's calling for unity in the church, Right? And he's reminding Christians of who they are and who they're called to be. And he gives examples, just as in this scripture that we read. Uh, it's, he's saying, you know, don't live in this way. Don't, not as unwise, but as wise. Not as foolish, but understanding what the Lord's will is. So he, he's, he's comparing these two things, right? And uh, he's... He's doing this in a way to encourage the church. That applied to the church then. It's applied to the church all the way through history. It applies to the church today, right? Um, because who doesn't need encouragement? We always need some form of encouragement. We all encounter things that, that get us down. You know, right now, I mean, the, the one thing that sticks out in everybody's mind is COVID, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just sick and tired of hearing the word COVID. It's, it's all we've heard for a year and a half or more. It's COVID, 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 right? And just as we thought things were getting better, we were kind of getting back to normal, here comes the Delta variant. It, it ramps numbers back up and, and kind of throws us back into a state of confusion, right? Um, so we need encouragement now. Um, it, it can get us down. If, if all we do is sit around and we watch the news and we hear the numbers and, and we hear this and we hear that, and we don't know what to believe, it, it, you can't help but get a little bit down about that, right? So, so we need encouragement. Um, but he's also reminding us here that, you know, we're, we're to be thankful. And even in times of discouragement, 
there's still something to be thankful for, right? Just like I was talking to the kids at children's moments. There, there's always something to be thankful for, and, and we know that, but sometimes it's hard to remember, right? Um, a, por- a portion of the scripture also talks about sing and make melody the, to the Lord in your hearts, right? So, so what's he saying here? And, and, you know, some may interpret this as, oh, we're, we're not supposed to have instruments in worship, and that's fine. I, I, can, I can get on board with that. I don't care how you worship, just, just as long as you do. But I think when you take in the full context of this scripture and, and you read what's in front of it and what's behind it, I think he's telling us something different here. Um, I think it's, he's basically saying that, you know, sometimes maybe you can't find the words, to, to sing out in praise or, or to be thankful. And so you've got to do it in your heart. Things are so bad that you just have to, have to kind of be thankful in your heart, right? And maybe also it's a case of for fear of persecution, right? Maybe you can't sing out and be thankful and, and proclaim all the works of God. Remember, Paul's in prison. And I don't know what prison was like around Jesus' time, but I can imagine it probably wasn't very pleasant. It wasn't a good place to be, right? And, and he's there because he was out proclaiming the good news. So I can imagine that's probably not a place where he's wanting to go on proclaiming and, and to sing out, you know, all these hymns of praise, right? And, I, and also I think it's a look at it a, a little bit of a different way, but, but kind of in the same context as being in prison, maybe he's telling us, hey, you've got to have kind of that inner peace, right? You've, you've got to be happy in your heart. You've got to be thankful for the things, no matter the situation. And that brings to mind for me the saying that we've all heard, right? If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? We've all heard, we've all experienced that, I'm sure at some point in times in our life. Um, and, and I think that applies to, to kind of our, our spiritual side as well, that, you know, if our heart's not happy, if we're not thankful in our heart, the rest of our body, the rest of our lives is not going to be thankful and, and, and happy as well, right? Because it comes through, right? It comes through in our everyday lives. We've all, we all know people, um, and, and we've got both sides there. We've got the side, some people that are just happy all the time, Nothing can seem to get them down. There, there's a gentleman that comes into the bank, and, and every time, it doesn't matter what the price of wheat is, whether we're in a drought, whether we've just got a flood, he is always happy. He's in a good mood. I, I don't think I've ever seen the man in a bad mood. But then yet, we've got the flip side, right? We all know somebody who is just a complete grouch all the time. They're always unhappy, doesn't matter. They could have just gotten the perfect rain or the best thing. There's always something that they want to complain about, right? And, and so it, it shines through um, in our lives. And, and Paul is telling us right here at the beginning, he says, be very careful how you live. Right? Now, that's not a threat. He's not threatening us saying, hey, you know, you better pay attention or else, right? He's using that as encouragement. He's reminding us that we're made in God's image, right? And so we need to pay attention to how we live each and every day. Because as Christians, right, we're not called to live in isolation. We're not called to seclude ourselves. We're called to go out and and be in the public, and we are. Um, And as Christians, we're often criticized, right? Our mistakes are pointed out. Um, Sometimes we're called hypocrites, right? Sometimes we even call ourselves hypocrites. Um, you know, you, you'll see somebody and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll use myself for example, you know, being the director. I'm sure there's somebody in this community who's, who's heard me say something that I shouldn't have. I had a weak moment and I sinned and I said something and I said, you know, well, he's the youth director over there at the Methodist Church. And, and they kind of put you under a microscope or magnifying glass, right? And, and they're going to call you a hypocrite. But that's just the way it is and that's the way people are. But that's why Paul's telling us, pay close attention. People are watching. Pay attention to what you're doing and what you're saying. And so how do we live as wise people who aren't foolish? That's what Paul's telling us to do. How do we do that? And I thought about this, and, and it brought to mind one of my favorite quotes. And I've shared this with the youth group m- numerous times. They've heard it before. They're going to continue to hear it. But, but my, one of my favorite quotes is, good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from poor judgment, right? Let me say that again. 
Good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from poor judgment. So now I've got to, I've got to share a story. And, and I was thinking about it. And, okay, how do I tell people in the church that raised me how to live wise, right? There's a lot that are, that are older than me, have more wisdom than me. And then Friday happened. And, and sometimes these things, they just kind of write themselves, right? And, and my wife's smiling because she knows what's coming. But it's, it's Friday evening. I get off work, and Tara and Elsie are headed down to Rough Springs for the Watermelon Festival. I've been told it's the greatest festival on earth. Um, second only to the Pumpkin Festival, right? But it's, it's great. So they're down there. I'm going to go down there this, that evening and join them. But I had a few things I needed to do. I needed to uh, doctor a calf. Um, that we had taken in and, and needed to haul a little bit of hay, trying to get that done before the rain. And so I had my wife stop by the vet clinic, pick up a shot, and she left it for me there at the house. And I said, hey, I'm going to do this, and I'm going I'm to head your way. So I head out to where, where the calf is that needs to be doctored, and it's out in the pasture. We've just got a corral there. Don't have to shoot, squeeze shoot out there. And so I get to thinking, well, I'm, I'm pretty smart, and I'm just going to, Go out there, get this calf in the lot. I'm going to get it pinned up, and I'm going to give it a shot, right? Colton's over here smiling. He, he sees the writing on the wall. And so I go out there. I get him caught in the wire trap, and, and I get the calf sort of off up into the, the corral, and, and I'm kind of on top of the world. I'm thinking, man, this is going good. Everything's going smooth. According to plan, here we go, right? Well, so what I decided to do in order to doctor this calf is I was just going to block the loading chute, right, with my pickup. So I pulled my pickup up. It's got a grill guard on it, and I pull it up, and I block that loading chute. So I'm going to run it in that loading chute. I'm going to pin it up against the fence. I'm going to give it a shot, be done, and I'm out of here, right, on to the next project. Well, a little bit of information for you guys. This calf, we're getting close to weaning. So it's 400 plus pounds. It's not, we're not talking a little calf, right? We're talking a pretty good sized calf. But, you know, here I am. I'm young. I'm a guy. I can do this, right? I send the calf up that loading chute, and it's about the time that I did that that I realized I messed up, right? This was a bad decision. So the calf heads down the loading chute. It kind of gets to the pickup. It backs up a little bit, kind of heads up for it again, and I see it toss its head up, and it gets real light on its front two feet. So here we go. Jumps up on top of the hood, and it doesn't just clear the pickup, right? It lands on the hood, it flails around, kicks, it dents up the hood, scratches it. Thankfully, it didn't bust out the windshield. And then it jumps off the pickup. And just like all cattle do, it just trots off. Like it doesn't run off, but it kind of trots off. And, and I promise you, I, I think it kind of looked back at me and I could hear these words of, yeah, I did that. What are you going to do about it now, right? And, and if you guys have been around me, especially when it comes to animals, I don't like to be beat, right? I'm not going to let an animal win. A four-legged critter, a horse, a cow, whatever it is, they're not going to win. So, you know, one bad decision leads to another, so I jump in the pickup and I'm about to tear up the pickup trying to get this calf back in the lot so I can give it a shot. Finally get it pinned back up, settle down, and I'm like, okay, let's be smart about this. I go get the trailer, get a panel, fashion up kind of a squeeze chute, run it in there again, squeeze it up, give it a shot, everything works perfect, right? Same thing I should have done two hours ago, but I was smart, right? No, I wasn't. Poor judgment leads to experience, which leads to good judgment, right? And, and, and I'm a prime example of that. It, it happens all the time. Um, but that's just kind of a, a side note. Like I say, sometimes they, they kind of write themselves. And uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that's why God made steak taste so good, because those four-legged animals just drive you crazy, right? And, and so we get a little enjoyment out of that. But, um, but yeah, we, we learn from our mistakes and our failures. Um, it's, it's something that we have to pay attention to. And it says here in the scripture, because evil, the days are evil. Right? Evil's all around us. We're, we're tempted to sin. We're, we're tempted to be lazy, just as I was, right? We're, we're tempted to do those things, and, and what happens? Once we do one, we kind of fall down that rabbit hole, right? And, and one bad decision leads to another. Um, so we've, we've got to pay attention to that. We've got to stay on top of it. And you know, along that 
train of thought of living wise is, is we have to be sure to not submit to those simple joys, right? Those little small wins that, that we can submit to. In, in the scripture, he talks about, you know, not getting drunk on wine um, and, and not submitting to those things. But instead, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need that everlasting joy, right? The joy that, that's going to be in our hearts, that's going to shine through as we are, you know, living in the public and, and under the public's eye. So this afternoon, you know, we're, we're going to celebrate the life of a, of a dear friend, um, somebody who's, who's very near and dear to our hearts. Um, and, and I was thinking about this. I had the, had the opportunity to visit with Joy a little bit um, this week. And, you know, we got talking about it. And we said, Eddie, Eddie really knew how to live, right? He was, he was one who was full of the Holy Spirit. Um, he, he loved to be social. He loved to go out and visit and, and be a part of the community. And it didn't matter whether you were old or whether you were young. You know, he, he loved to visit with you um, and, and tell stories and, and tell jokes and have a good time, right? Um, and I honestly don't know that, that Eddie had any enemies. I'm sure he did. We all do, right? But I honestly think that if somebody wasn't afraid of it, a friend of Eddie's, it was just simply because Eddie had met him. Right? If, once you met Eddie, you were friends immediately. That's, that's just the type of guy he was. But he made the most of his time here, right? And, and he was very careful in how he lived. Um, he, he knew that he was a reflection of Christ, that he was made in his image. And uh, so he was, he was aware of that. So our relationship with God, our relationship with others, it's very personal, Right? It's, it's a very personal experience and it's unique to everybody. Um, whether, you know, your, your relationship with Christ is unique from somebody else's, you may have the same friend as somebody else, but that relationship between you two is completely unique. It's something that nobody else has, right? But it's, it's never private. You know, we, there's nothing that we can do and be truly private. It's, it's always out there for people to see. And part of that is because we're called to be part of the body of Christ, right? We're, that's why we gather here on Sunday mornings to worship and fellowship, is because we're called to do that, called to be in unity with one another um, and, and to celebrate and fellowship together. So Paul is reminding us to live as examples for others, right? He's encouraging us to do that, to pay attention to how we live and, and to, to be that example. But not only in the good times, Right? He's calling us to be an example in the bad times. And sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do. Right? When, when the chips are down and things are bad and, and it's not going our way, it's hard to be that good example. It's hard to be thankful. Um, it's hard to remember those things. But that's why we can turn you know, to the book of Ephesians. We can remember that. And, and just as I told the kids, you know, we need to not be thankful on Thanksgiving. That's when we think about it, you know, especially around the holidays. Well, it's, it's really good time to be thankful then, but August, you know, we, what's there to be thankful for in August, right? It's hot, it's miserable, it's, it's not a lot of fun, right? We, kids have to go back to school. Maybe that's what we're always thankful for as parents is our kids are going back to school. But uh, it's, it's the good times and the bad, um, no matter what they are. We're, we're called to be that example, to be the light of Christ. So let's remember that today as, as we go forward. Um, to, to be thankful and to be that example for others to live by, knowing that, yes, there's some that are going to scrutinize our decisions to, um, you know, maybe call us hypocrites um, for when we do stumble and sin and we have those, those shortfalls. But we can still, still be thankful and be an example for everyone. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand for our hymn of invitation this morning on page 395 in your red hymnal, Take Time to Be Holy. Take time to be holy, speak off with thy Lord, abide in him always, 
feed on His Word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak. Forgetting yet nothing, His blessing to see. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like Him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, His likeness shall see. getting out early today but uh, go, go forth today go out into the world to be the light of christ to live as wise not as unwise and and to be the hands and feet of jesus amen amen, amen.